the people think That cannabis is just for smoking But when they hear this song They'll learn there's more a token 25,000 different things we can make from it And if we give it a chance We'll save the blinking planet Food, fuel and medicine Necessities for life A benefit to all of us I wonder and delight Reading this smelly weed There's more to me, see I So much, much more than smoking It can cleanse our dirty skies Cannabis, cannabis will save the planet with cannabis Cannabis, cannabis is a very useful weed cannabis. Just, we love cannabis Hi Casper, hi Sierra We really are like family, Hello. aren't we? Great Now just before we went in live did I hear you asking Landon to be quiet? Oh, I was actually telling Landon to tell everybody else to be quiet. <laughs> oh, good. Because you got, you got to remember, Sierra, that at the end of the day, this is actually Landon's show. And we're only standing exactly. until he's old enough to run it himself. Because by the time yep. he's four and a half hour, by the time he makes about ten, I reckon he'll be running this show. And I can retire. <laughs> I, I hope so, honestly. I hope that Absolutely. that's is what happens. That one day yeah. he's telling the story and he's, you know, educating cool. people and, you know, doing events and stuff. Yeah, what a marvellous educator. You're not going to get better than that, are you? I was two. I caught cancer. I took cannabis. And he's going to be full on. And people are, yeah, he's going to be a real seven, isn't he? But that's, that's his first job. He's got to take my radio station over. So don't forget, on our show, he can make as much noise as he wants. <laughs> well, so I how let him you? know. He'll be right, so you're, you're about, well, how long are you post-hospital trauma? What's that, a couple of weeks now? Yes, so we are, uh, you know, a couple of weeks out <clears throat> from having refused, uh, you know, the 30 the day then Christine oh. chemotherapy. Oh, what a day. And, what a day. I uh, know. And so now they're, um, it's, you know, they're sending some correspondence to Landon's home health nurses, which are, um, you know, very open and honest with me that they're saying they're not ending the chemotherapy, they're just going to. Um, change some things up, you know, that kind of thing. So he has an appointment next week. I know, right? It's um, about a, I think it's next week. Yeah, next week. Yeah. And um, we'll see what they say when we go in. Wow. Well, ob obviously, I'm jumping the gun, but I take it you're going to refuse it. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to tell them, okay. you know, that it's been 20 months, 20 yeah. months that he's been in remission. And yeah. it's been uh, 14 of those solely using cannabis. You know, they know that I, you know, picked yeah. up the prescriptions yeah. all of this time, but I never gave them yeah. to him. So I still have all of that here. And I'm going to tell them, you know, it's no, no means no. And if you guys want to not. take me to court, then let's do it. Yeah. I don't think that any jury of sane people would be willing to put Landon back on after 14 months. And, of course, all the radio networks, all the TV stations, all the media globally that would be on you. Oh, well done, Sierra. That's, I, I, know, I know there's other problems involved in saying no, but at the end of the day, with all knowing what we know, if you did give him chemo, you would be the criminal, really, wouldn't you, in our world? Five years oh, from now, or a year know, from now, when all this sort of that, any mother, any, is any parent, so many yeah. It's a total reversal by giving it to him. That's what you would be. You would be a criminal. You would be invasive. You would be killing him. You'd be doing all those sort of things that they're actually accusing you of doing. But what you do is you heal your son through a plant. And they're trying to kill him with some horrible poison. So oh, send that I child. Know. Well, we're all behind you. you know, I you, think you, you're you, all you know that more like parents will stand up. That's yeah. what I'm hoping is that by hearing the story and, and seeing that my son is healthy, he yeah. is in remission, without yeah. having completed even 50% of yeah. their chemo plan, that more parents will start to question. That more parents will say, well, why do you want him to do chemo for four years? Or why are you feeding my son cancer-causing foods while he's in a hospital? You know, there's so many issues, guys, with children's no. cancer centers. I mean, there's so many issues. So many issues strange varieties. I mean, at least you haven't got that problem in Colorado, have you? You can actually get you what know, you need. You know, 
on, on, on exactly. The, on the we were talking about that last night. Um, you know, we had a barbecue with some fellow patients and stuff, and we were talking about even if our home states did legalize it, you know, would we go back? Because it's not just the fact that cannabis is here. The people here are very supportive of us. Nobody looks down at us. It's easier to live a healthy lifestyle, you know, eating organic and things like that. And it's just, you know, it's the environment here. It's just there's so much more welcoming and everything else, whereas even some of our own family members still can't wrap their fat, their minds around the fact that our children are medical marijuana patients. Yeah. Which is pretty crazy. And the thing is, is that this isn't just a season. These kids will be on medical marijuana for a good part of the rest of their lives to keep them healthy. And why not? Exactly, isn't it? Why not? At least if he's on that, from everything that we've ever seen, and I've got, I I was actually talking to a friend of mine the other night who's now in his 70s, and he's been a full time, pretty much medical user for the best part of 50 years plus. And he's fine. Besides the medical problem he's got, right, which this really helps with, he's fine. He's really fine. He's in a wheelchair, but he's fine. Because he's never really used the pharmaceutical stuff. He's only ever used the plant base. He's been in jail for it. He's had some trouble in his life. But nevertheless, 70 years old, he's tickety boot. And there's not many people with his condition that do reach that age, funny enough. So there you go. So the chances are, and, if he's, you know, if I he's like, how what kind of health he would be in if he had taken these pharmaceuticals the rest of his life, you know. And that's the thing dead. is, what kind of long term damage are we doing to our cancer patients, our epilepsy patients? Yeah. Because they don't even, you know, for epilepsy, they don't even have an effective treatment. They're just throwing this at them and throwing that yes, at them. Uh, you know, absolutely. what's going to be the long term effects when these children are twenty or thirty or forty or seventy, like you're saying? Yeah. Again, we, well, we have proof that we landed his cure for two years. He's only four and a half. My mate's in his 70s, he's been doing it for the best part of 50 years. So there should be no real reason why, it, when Landon reaches 55 years of age, he shouldn't be a fit and healthy human being. Whereas we know if he was on that morphine stuff, the chances of him even reaching that age are going to be exceptional. And if he does, what condition is he going to be in? A 50 year old junkie, basically. And that's not a pretty sight. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah. what other kind of health problems would he have oh. as a result of, oh. you know, Landon did do radiation. He did, you know, all of these intense chemotherapies, and even just the small amount that he had, Landon has a lot of developmental delays. He has chemo brain where he yeah. just, you know, can't get out what he's saying. He's just, like, stuck on repeat. And yeah. I can't imagine if I would have let him do a whole four years of this or even two yeah. years of this. I mean, could you imagine, like, the – the, the state of his mind and for them to tell us, you know, well, the amount of brain damage that this is going yeah. to cause is minimal, you know, compared yeah. to blah, blah, blah. Well, that's like saying, you know, um, if I give somebody brain damage and they were a doctor and now they're only going to be an RN, that is a significant amount of brain damage in my opinion. I think, you know, as, from said, a doctor, as, as, as you I well don't know. understand why these are the, the treatments. Yeah. I don't understand why no one else is standing up and refusing or asking for a better way, for more educational information. You know, ask your doctors, hey, have you heard about cannabis? Oh, and if they say no, well, would you mind looking into it for my child? Yeah, exactly. You know, do you think it'll help? You know, start putting the pressure on these physicians. Start putting the pressure on these oncologists, these neurologists. You know, all of these doctors that have been skating by for so long on just hopping our kids up on pharmaceuticals. Yeah, and us believing them. It's interesting you mentioned about Landon, because you know I had a lot of chemo, yeah? This brain damage, mm -hmm. I suffer with that sometimes. Or I actually lose track, and I sort of get stuck on repeat. So, again, there should be research done into this, because, because you don't get to meet many live living chemo people. Right? There's not that many of us, believe it or not. When we actually get together and we start talking about the side effects of chemo, even though we've had different types of chemo for different types of problem, there does seem to be some problems that we've been left with, which certainly are chemo-related and not disease-related. And they, you never hear about that. There's not much up on the net. There's not much talk. No, we're talking to the doctor about it. 
So again, somewhere yeah. down the line, five or ten years, we all need we all need some brain scan to find out what they have eaten away with the bloody radiation. Nah? I can assure you as well, though, uh, for for Landon's sake, by doing the, the hemp seed oil and the medicine and the coconut oil, my memory has improved vastly. But I know after the chemo, I had even trouble remembering my own name. Nah? Wow. So, yeah, and, and that's this. good to hear because I've been using a lot of coconut oil yeah. and coconut milk and things like that, you know, mm. trying to, you know, just help him recover and help him, you know, his brain to make those connections again. But it's just sad, you know, it's sad that that's the norm, that we're supposed to be okay with this, um, you know, this lessening of quality of life in our children, you know, because they're sick. And why should we be doing any of this? When yeah. diet and nutrition and alkalining your body, not eating crap food, processed food, <laughs> sugar food, all of these things, and intaking cannabis and hemp daily. Yeah. And ever, I really believe that if people would just start doing this, we would see cancer disappear because everybody yeah. would be so healthy that there would be no yeah. room for cancer. And then it brings us back to that story. If there's no room for, for cancer, there's no room for cancer cares. And once you exactly. have got rid- then you start looking at the bank balance and you go, oh, my gosh, maybe this is the reason they want to feed us this bullshit. Well, I mean, just think of how, you know, the unemployment rate in the United States is astronomical. I mean, it yeah. is uh, just, oh, it's the, you know, some of the worst that it's oh. ever been. And if we cured cancer today yeah. and all of these cancer treatment centers and an adult pediatric, if they all got shut down, yeah. Do you know how many jobs would be lost? Do you know how many jobs would be created by having this? Exactly, but the, exactly. So there would be Let's all of the these jobs side. lost. But then, well, yeah, but then if we could convert those people into yeah. helping people to stay yeah. healthy, organic gardens, yeah. cannabis gardens. I mean, yeah. in order to, you know, treat a group of people, you've got to have a lot of plants. You know, all of these people could be put into other resources, all of this money being raised to find a cure, which we all know is complete bullshit. You know, all of that could be made into making, you know, hemp houses. Let's just tear down all the houses, make hemp houses, because that's another thing I firmly believe in is we're living in carcinogen boxes that do not breathe. And yeah, look at all the crap that they put into building our house and then we're breathing it in every day of our lives. Is it any wonder we I mean, get there's sick? so much more to it than just cancer or just cannabis oh. or, you know, it's just, it's a huge, oh. huge big wheel change. of crap. Yeah, it's a huge crap wheel. <laughs> and there's a big change coming and that big crap wheel is going to seize up. The crap's going to get thrown everywhere. So put your shit umbrellas up. Because <laughs> it's yeah, going exactly. ra- to be raining crap for a bit. <laughs> and everybody's going to fall on all your heads. And then we wake up in a much nicer world where we have, oh, it's not a pipe dream, it's not some John Lennon EP. What? Once we reinstate our plant properly throughout the world, we end up with good building materials, good fibres, good medicine, the workforces are a lot fitter. And there's always things to do. There's always something to do. Yeah? Especially with yep, all these there's always They're someone going to, be saving to help. Money on the police. They're going to be saving money on healthcare. There's going to, the, yep. the economies will, and once they stop this bloody war machine, well, that's it. It's all over. There's, there's enough money to go around for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Who's going to want? Yeah, there's, uh, really? you know, I wish it was just one simple fix for all of these issues. And unfortunately, you're right. Cannabis. It's not. It's called cannabis. The yeah, well, you cannabis. know, cannabis, you know, for cancer and everything, these diseases, yes. But, you know, the war machine and everything else, it's just this whole, you know, all of our governments, not just my country, you guys' oh, country, oh. you know, all oh. everywhere. It's all yeah. so corrupt. And it's all so out of hand that they don't care that our children are dying, that, you know, they don't care about anything except keeping money in their checking account and, you know, keeping their lifestyle the way that they've been living it. And for anyone to think that these politicians or these people care about our children, they are dead wrong. You've got to make them care. You've got to practically harass these people to where they remember your face. They know who your child is. And they know that you're not going to stop unless they listen to you. That's what we need in every single state, you know, is we need the cancer patients, the epilepsy patients, the Crohn's, the MS, PTSD, all of these things, you know, we need all of them to stand together at the capitals and say, we want it. 
We want the we whole want thing, it. not a little bit. We don't want CBD only or this only. Uh, we want uh, all of it. We don't want to have to import it from Colorado. We want to uh, grow it ourselves, and uh, we want to be responsible for our own health care. Yes. Oh, you should put that on tape and play it from the highest minuet. <laughs> because that's all we want, isn't it? At the end of the day, you, me, the people in Iceland, the people in South Africa, the people in Australia, the people in Colorado, the people where people in Canada, that's all we want is freedom for this herb to be free. And for any politician, it is the most easiest thing to do. All the polls that are coming back, everybody's 70, 80, 90% in favour. So they're not really going to upset anybody, are they? No. Nah. Nope. And it's honestly, be, you know, uh, even if we do upset some people, you know, some of the older generation, it's tough. It's tough. I would like for them to come meet some of my fellow canna moms and cancer yeah. moms that are, they've just buried their child and tell yeah. me how upset you are now when you see that that child could have been saved. Yes. You know, I'm sure that people were upset over, you know, a lot of things. And I remember not too long ago, you know, there was not allowed to be, you know, tampon or feminine product commercials at all. There was no condom commercials. There was no alcohol commercials. And now that's all I see if I'm watching TV is all of these crazy commercials for products and McDonald's and crap food and toxins to put in your body. So we're telling the American people that this is okay. So that then, you know, they're doing all these things and they get cancer and then you get to then have a customer for life because you're not telling them about diet and nutrition. So how does it make sense that you're going to get a, go and get a very expensive treatment, whether it's chemotherapy or cannabis oil, and not change anything else about your lifestyle? You yep. can't do it. Can't do not it. successfully. It's yeah, you cannot do it. it unless, <laughs> yeah, you have got to change your lifestyle. You've got yeah. to change the things you're eating, the things you're inputting into your body. And it is hard. Trust me, having a, you know, a child with cancer, it was very hard because he was used to the hot dogs, hamburgers, yeah. chicken nuggets, you know, ice cream, jello, yeah. you know, all of these things that once I found out how they're made and what's in them, that I was like, why are they giving this to him at the hospital? You know, and even that. now, guys, this is the thing I don't think a lot of people know is even now that I've known about nutrition and I have him on a, an organic diet, when I take him, if he has to go to the hospital for anything, they yeah. tell you, you are not allowed to have any restrictions on his diet while he's in this hospital. We can feed him whatever we want. <laughs> How does that even make sense? <laughs> Listen, one of the big um, cardio hospitals in the UK, right, Stoke Mandeville, which is renowned, I Stoke Mandeville, it's renowned for its heart problems, right? In the world, it's one of the number one treatments for heart problems. They've just given the franchise to the restaurant, to McDonald's. So you're going to have your hope and heart surgery and then go and chomp down on a fatty burger. <laughs> it's like, wow. hello? Yeah, exactly. How does that hello? make sense? Tell me that they're not hand in hand with them. I mean, they don't want you to get better. They want you to get better for a little while and then have a relapse. You know, they, I, I mean, just guys, the amount of people that I know that, and then, you know, not even just your food and stuff, but the actual treatment they're giving you for the first kind of cancer causes secondary cancer, however many years down the road. So they're not only telling you to feed your cancer practically They are telling you, we're going to give you this treatment that's going to take away the initial problem, but it's going to cause you an even bigger one down the road. And it could be a brain tumor. Now you have to have brain surgery. It could be breast cancer, lung cancer, you know, whatever it is. And we're supposed to be okay with that. We're supposed to be okay with that standard of cancer treatment. And if it doesn't cause all that, I actually want them to start spending the money to prove it doesn't. Because I've never seen any proof on this. Only that it does cause these cancers. So I think it's time for them to start proving that our medicine don't work. I think it's starting to prove them that the food is safe because it's not. Yeah. Exactly. It's just food yeah, but we're you know we're the time. crazy ones for wanting to grow hemp and grow cannabis <laughs> and live a sustainable life. But yeah, yeah, here they are releasing Super Vicodin yeah. and a new brand of Oxycontin, and you know refusing to even look at it. That's the thing is that most of these doctors that I have ran into, they refuse to even look at it. But, you know, they claim themselves to be an expert. Well, if you're an expert, then isn't it your job? 
We're having such a good chat. I've forgotten the time. We've got to go and take a break. I can do that to you because you're. Oh, mate. okay. Take a break. Sorry, I'll get going, guys. <laughs> we're, good. We're, we're, share. we're just rabbit away here. <laughs> are listening to the Time for Hemp Global Broadcasting Network. Please share us with your friends. THCF Medical Clinics are the premier physician's clinic in the United States. THCF has offices all across the United States from Hawaii to Michigan. THCF Medical Clinics has helped approximately 150,000 patients obtain their medical marijuana permits to legally possess, grow, and use medical marijuana. If you have chronic pain, multiple sclerosis, or any other neurological degenerative disease, or if you have any gastrointestinal disorders such as GERD, irritable bowel syndrome, or if you have AIDS, cancer, spastic disorders, seizure disorders, or glaucoma, call us at 1-800-723-0188 or visit us online at hemp.org. Again, the number is 1-800-723-0188 and the site is hemp.org. In need of a ganja vacation? Blaze away. Don't criticize me. Hotbox Jamaica. Chill. Relax and burn all day while watching the emotions. Amazing ocean view. Listen to the birds. Bathe in the mineral waters of the Ganja River. Munch on tasty Jamaican Rasta food. Take a weed farm tour and hold a meditation. Book this amazing vacation for $420. Get the Sativa Special. Seven nights in sativa dorms with ganja meals and airport transfer. Check us out at hotboxjamaica.com That's hotboxjamaica.com Hotbox Jamaica A Haya Meditation Vacation Indigo is your source for affordable induction grow lighting. First discovered in 1891 by Nikola Tesla, Indigo lights deliver 11 years of electronic sunlight to your plants. Indigo lamps require less than half the power of traditional HID lamps. Converting to Indigo lights means you'll cut down on your power bill with less lighting. Indigo lamps also use five times less mercury than traditional fluorescent or HID lamps, making Indigo not only energy efficient but environmentally friendly as well. No more switching out lamps between vegetative and flowering stages. As nature intended, your lights get a steady dose of UV light. That makes your plants grow healthier and stronger. Indigo products are manufactured in San Diego, California and come with a written 10-year warranty. What Tesla knew, then growers know now, is that Indigo lighting is the cost-effective addition to your victory garden. To learn more or order now, go to inda-grow.com. That's inda-gro.com. Or call 877-452-2244 to answer any of your questions. These guys really know lights. Indigo really is your sunlight in a box. Education and information. See what all the buzz is all about. It's time for hemp. It's time for hemp. He recommends it to MS sufferers. Her is desperate need. It's medicinal, it's pure, and it helps to ease the pain. And if you're feeling down, my friend, it'll pick you up again. Cannabis, cannabis will save the planet. Well, that was an interesting break. We had a talk about social um, anthropology, of which Sierra <laughs> Riddle and her family are taking because they've just been interviewed by Sierra. Would you like to tell us who just interviewed? Yeah, we would love to. Um, 
we were contacted by National Geographic, um, mm-hmm. and they want to. I know they want to do a cover story um, in the magazine on cannabis. And you know, she had heard of Landon through you know different people, the, this photographer, and decided to come out and meet Landon. And then she was really, I think, kind of blown away by just, you know, the entire situation. Um, I rented a four-bedroom house so that I could house, you know, two or three other refugees. And so, you know, there's someone here from Texas with lupus, and there's someone here from Missouri with um, wasting syndrome, and someone here from Washington, you know, with fractures and uh, replaced uh, limbs and things like that. And it's just, she was seriously blown away. And I told her, Oh, if you think that this is awesome, come to a little get together. We're having just a nice friendly cookout. I mean, we had, you know, quadriplegics, we had 14 year old Crohn patients, um, families from all different states, refugees, people that were born and lived here. And she was just so, you know, it was amazing to see so many different kind of people, adults, children, families, uh, single parent families. And we were all here and all connected by uh, one thing. And that well is done, cannabis. You. Well done, you. Because once they get hold of a story, that's it. It's it, That's bigger than CNN. That's, you know, the people that read that magazine are the people that are, Truly empowered. I don't just mean politicians. We've got scientists, doctors, lawyers. And basically, have you ever heard of a guy called David Attenborough? No, I haven't. He makes films. He makes natural films. He's, he's actually English. He's made some beautiful things like The Blue Planet. Anybody that's really into nature programs sort of knows of David Attenborough. Very famous guy. We, I would imagine you'll end up with him around your house at some point, going, and here is the subspecies, the new species of the Riddle family. Now, they're all taking cannabis, because that's how he talks. And he's really great. He's a lovely man. And he's, he's done some amazing films. And I can imagine him turning up on your doorstep, <laughs> making a film about this new species. Honestly, of, that, of, you know, I would, be, I would be thrilled for more people to come and see and, yeah. and meet these people, you know, that yeah. I've you know, just run into through all of this. And it's just so amazing because honestly, I've never seen anything like it, guys. I've never seen one single, you know, medication that's yeah. helping so many different people with so yeah. many different issues. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, blown, it's even blown my mind. I mean, I, I'm now a firm believer of, you know, all things cannabis, almost. It's gotten to that point. <laughs> all things cannabis. Welcome on board, Sierra. Welcome on yeah. board. <laughs> yeah, it's but it's awesome. It's you know, I started using like face wash and face lotion, you know, that has yeah. cannabis uh, in it and CBD and and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, guys, like, do you see this? My skin looks better. I'm like, yeah. I'm not kidding. Like, it's just yeah. the more that I learn about it, the yeah. more that I'm like, are you, like, I just I feel so betrayed. I feel so used. Uh, like, I was just used as a pawn in this game. Yeah and my parents and my grandparents and, you know, my family and friends, all of us were, you know, and so it's just so terrible to see how long these people have been suffering. And then it's like, as soon as they get here, it's like, you know, it's almost like these people think that I have like a magical house, you know, that as soon as they get here, they start feeling better. And I'm like, guys, it's cannabis and it's being around good people, not being in a negative environment where people are going to judge you or berate you for not wanting to take narcotics because I know people that do that. Well, I just yep. can't believe you'd rather smoke weed than take your Oxycontin. That makes you, yeah. you know, a terrible person. <laughs> and Little that's what's know. awesome about this community that we've built is that we're all like-minded and that nobody here is going to judge you for it. And that, in fact, that could probably teach you something that you didn't even know you could do with it. Yeah. Well, in Dr. Robert Melameda's book, you would all be cannabinoid efficient rather than cannabinoid deficient. So you're living in a house full of people that are fully compensated and are actually operating normally. Yeah, you see, other lot are yeah. all actually weird. The cannabinoid deficient mob, they're acting very strange. Don't want to listen to reason. Don't want to look at new facts. Want to stay in the past that don't seem to work like to go around killing people with their ideology and their medicine. Uh, it's madness. And when you can see it, 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 it it's so clear, it's so plain bad. to see, isn't it? Well, I'm so glad. When does, this, when does the magazine come out? Did they tell you? 
<laughs> so they, uh, yeah, she said that they are, you know, they came out here to meet, um, you know, different people. And I know they met with a lot of the other refugee families that are yeah. here for um, not only the realm of caring, but for Haley's Hope, you know, Jason Cranford's strain as well. And she was, I guess they were so, you know, just blown away by everything that they're going to come back Good, we'll and back. spend some more time. <laughs> yeah, they're going to come back and spend some more time um, with our family, Wendy Turner's family, and a couple others to just see our daily life and really see what the life of a marijuana refugee is like. You know, everybody cool, thinks that it's all I'll traveling and events, and it's not. A big shout out for Wendy, because I recognize that now. She does the 710 Canna. Bloons, doesn't she? The kids. Is that yeah, that seven ten can of kids. Yeah, well Wendy. Wendy. Hello. Is awesome. Yeah, That's Wendy. Awesome. Woo. <laughs> yeah, she, her son is a Crohn's patient, um, and just that story is just absolutely um, amazing and also terrifying. You know, they went in just one issue that they've had. They went in to uh, take you know something out for a biopsy, and they took out the wrong thing. They took out oh. his uh, saliva glands. Yes. Oh. And then they expected them to bring him back in for another surgery. Like, oh, let us cut him back open and take what we originally wanted out. You know, and as most people know, for Crohn's, I mean, people can endure literally dozens upon dozens of surgeries for Crohn's. And they give them chemotherapy and Humira and, you know, all of these things that are just deadly. And Colton now on cannabis, I mean, you should see this kid, guys. He's bouncing around my house. He's hanging out. He's throwing horseshoes outside. I mean, it is, it's absolutely amazing to see. And, you know, I started running into Wendy a while back uh, when, you know, I started hanging with Magical Butter, magicalbutter.com. We yeah, love those guys. We love you. The magic food maker. And yeah. yeah, I kept seeing Wendy everywhere. And I'm like, who is this lady? And then I met her son and everything. And, and it was just, it was so amazing. And yeah, she started 710 Can of Kids and, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to working with her. We've got some special things in the works that we're really going to um, try to do big. Like how I was telling you guys last time about Camp King Landon, and um, we're going to, you know, make this a reality. We're going to find land. We're going to set up individual houses made of either hemp or straw for families to come here and learn how to grow food and grow cannabis and also then convert it into um, whatever you want. I've actually got a, a chef here from Washington State, guys, and she has been making Landon organic, from scratch, infused cheesecakes, infused oh. gelato. Oh. I know. Oh. Pumpkin pie. <laughs> she makes barbecue me. sauce. She's making, I mean, she's up there. That lady, oh, I'm just so blown away by her and her, um, just her generosity. She came here um just willing to show me everything that has made her a successful person. She has a business in Washington state where she does this and she, you know, makes individual meals for people that are sick, that are made from quality products because that's a huge thing. Most of these edible companies are not using quality products and we're feeding cancer. So she, yeah, she is um, absolutely amazing. And I'm so excited to, learn from this and then I'm going to start making some videos and stuff showing everybody how they can make their own infused food and stop paying an arm and a leg for these um, medicated edibles yeah. in the dispensary. Would you ask this lady if she'd come on my show, please? Because I love talking hemp food. I would points. love to. Yeah, we I would love to. This lady is going to be a huge asset for us, guys. I mean, anything. Peanut brittle. She is a chef that has literally learned the amazing art of infusing and what's even more amazing about this guys is you all saw my harvest pictures so all the food that she's infusing she made the infusion with my cannabis that i grew for landon oh that is cannabis i know so from start to finish it is completely 100 percent organic from seed to plate isn't that exciting? And imagine that exciting. I could give this to people. I could uh-huh. show people this. Yeah. How amazing. What's education. I mean, education is the key to bringing down it's, 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 this pyramid of lies. Well, we've just come back from a raw fest 
fest, a raw fest show, three days in the field, all about new food and nutrition. I had an absolutely lovely time. So thank you all the raw fest organisers. Um, but yeah, same thing there, which is loads of people all learning about food, all learning about nutrition, all learning about cannabis because I was there, obviously, because they're starting to realise now that whatever else cannabis is and whatever else you want to call it, cannabis is food. It is food. It is food that keeps us well. It is food that keeps us nutritionally balanced. It is food that if we get poorly, it can fix us quicker than most other types of food groups. But if you do use all the other food groups, you can get fixed too. But cannabis is more direct and you don't have to mess about so much. Yeah. What's this exactly. chef's name? What's her name? Her, so I don't, I'll have to ask her if she, well, I don't think she would mind actually. So I'll just put it out there. Her name is Shannon. And, um, uh, Shannon, you know, we want to talk to yeah, you. Yeah, she, <laughs> I know. She, oh my gosh. I'm so excited for you guys to talk to her. Cause she's just going to blow your mind. Um, yeah. just the amount of, um, dedication by this lady. She had a, a young son pass away a long time ago, um, yeah. to, just through an accident. And, yeah. you know, so she just has such a connection for these children that are being lost. Yeah. And then on top to add insult to injury, um, she had her children taken away from her because of cannabis. Oh, and no. she's dedica- I know she's dedicated her life to helping my child, you know, to helping other children and yeah. other adults that yeah. are suffering. And I mean, that is so selfless to me. That is one of, you know, the most amazing gifts that somebody could give to me is teaching me how to be yeah. self-sustainable for Landon. Because I yeah. am a single mom, and I think a yeah. lot of us are in that boat where we're looking yeah. at the price of organic versus the price yeah. of McDonald's, and we're like, well, uh, <laughs> you know, that's what's going on. They've made it yeah. very difficult to be a healthy oh. person. They've made it astronomically They've made it expensive. so easy. they put little cartoon characters on. they made it all welcoming. If you was a little person and didn't know, you'd want to go to McDonald's. Of course you would. Of course. Right. It looks awesome. And that's, you know, that's the, the food of the yeah. Olympians. You know, the Olympic people eat that. When I saw that commercial, I wanted to vomit. I but guarantee you, you ah, people that are winning gold medals are not eating at uh, freaking McDonald's. Why I are they tell, lying to I us? Can act, right, Sierra Williams, the tennis player, right, comes from America. She's a vegetarian vegan when she's, when she's working. Right, uh, David Hay, world champion boxer. Vegan, vegetarian, right? All on hemp seed nutrition. The Jonathan Edwards, long track, gold. The list is endless. Now, if I was a sports person, I can most probably sit here for an hour reeling off names of Olympiads that are now either vegan or vegetarian and are also starting to combine health seed nutrition with their diet for the protein. Most best athletes in the world now have changed their diets over. Why? Because they work. Why? Because they're efficient. And why? Because they're Olympians. They are, they are the top of their tree. And they need the exactly. best. Exactly. They know what they need to make their body them. function at 100%. Absolutely. And I think Absolutely. that we all need an activated and fully operating endocannabinoid system in order yeah. to function properly. We do. And, you know, it's the, here in Colorado, it's just, it's, you know, it's so amazing. And, and you almost have to just jump right in with both hands. You know, I was at a a friend's house the other day and they're like, Hey, we're making salad. And Oh, I love salad. And so they just went outside and snipped it, you know, from their garden and then proceeded to snip some from their hemp plant. And um, these hemp plants are like almost seven feet tall. And I was like, Oh, you just put it in your salad like that. Like I, you know, how dumb of me, of course you can. And they were like, yeah. And they made a dressing with it and it was, it was so delicious, and I so felt delicious. so peaceful, and yeah. I did not feel high, but I felt very right. peaceful. I, I felt very in tune with the people that were around right. me, and yeah. it was delicious. Yeah. Are we going to take another break? We're going to pay the All bills. right. Cool. Press the button, Mr. Casper. Listening to the Time for Hemp Global Broadcasting Network. Please share us with your friends. 
If you are in the Portland, Oregon area and are an OMMP cardholder, then come down to Nikki's Diggity Dank Market, Portland, Oregon's first and only weekly OMMP market, presented by the Alternative Wellness Center, located at 5241 Southeast 72nd Avenue, two blocks south of Foster Boulevard, close to public transportation, held every Sunday, 10 a.m. till 7 p.m., connecting quality vendors with patients. Nikki's Diggity Dank Market also has a weekly raffle with products from every vendor. So come down to Nikki's Diggity Dank Market and have fun while connecting with quality vendors and getting great natural medicine. If you are a vendor and want a chance to connect with OMMP patients, you can check out their Facebook page at facebook.com slash alternative wellness center or call 971-888-4392. Be sure to register early because space is limited. Nikki's Diggity Dank Market. In need of a ganja vacation? Blaze away. Don't criticize me. Hotbox Jamaica. Chill. Legalize this Relax and burn all day while watching the amazing ocean view. Listen to the birds. Bathe in the mineral waters of the Ganja River. Munch on tasty Jamaican Rasta food. Take a weed farm tour and hold a meditation. Book this amazing vacation for $420. Get the Sativa Special. Seven nights in sativa dorms with ganja meals and airport transfer. Check us out at hotboxjamaica.com. That's hotboxjamaica.com. Hotbox Jamaica, a higher meditation vacation. Indigo is your source for affordable induction grow lighting. First discovered in 1891 by Nikola Tesla, Indigo lights deliver 11 years of electronic sunlight to your plants. Indigo lamps require less than half the power of traditional HID lamps. Converting to Indigo lights means you'll cut down on your power bill with less lighting. Indigo lamps also use five times less mercury than traditional fluorescent or HID lamps, making Indigo not only energy efficient but environmentally friendly as well. No more switching out lamps between vegetative and flowering stages. As nature intended, your lights get a steady dose of UV light. That makes your plants grow healthier and stronger. Indigo products are manufactured in San Diego, California and come with a written 10-year warranty. What Tesla knew, then growers know now, is that Indigo lighting is the cost-effective addition to your victory garden. To learn more or order now, go to inda-grow.com. That's inda-gro.com. Or call 877-452-2244 to answer any of your questions. These guys really know lights. Indigo really is your sunlight in a box. Free? Did you say free? Free hemp? Free hemp? Free hemp video and audio? Free downloads of all the top artists, all the pot artists on planet Earth. Interviews with all the people making the movement, making the hemp movement. It's time for hemp. That's right, world. It's time for hemp. That's right, world. It's time for him. Right, we're going to give some lovely shout outs. My one's going out to the people at Raw Fest, Leah and the crew. I'm so impressed, even what are we now, uh, five days after the event, I'm still buzzing off of it. One of the things that come up there for us, Sierra, as well, was people were asking us what they can do to help. And I think my answer at the moment is just fully inform yourselves about cannabis hemp and true facts, and then start talking about it. Because what we've all ended up as at the moment, isn't it, is educators. You are finding this, aren't you, that really your life now is educating other people. Is that correct? 
Yes, so, um, it is. You know, and it, it's, it quickly went from, you know, we'll just go to this one event or two events to now, um, you know, I have an event, two events scheduled for yeah. every month. And I, I really started learning quickly, you know, that I can't expect anybody to act if they're not educated. I can't yeah. expect them to show up or to write, you know, the 420 pop prisoners or to do any of these things, support our children or spread the cause if they don't know about it. So, yeah. you know, I tell everybody, first and foremost, you know, if you don't have, you know, money to attend these events and buy tickets, you know, we're fortunate enough to our travel to be sponsored. Mm -hmm. There is Google right there at your fingertips. Start reading the studies. Start, you know, becoming aware. Start sharing it and then start talking about it. Start telling your friends about Landon and about Brave Michaela and about, you know, all of these different children that these different illnesses are being treated. I mean, how many people are just between cancer, epilepsy, Crohn's, and PTSD? Oh. How many people do all of us know that suffer with something like that? So, uh, looked, you know, I tell I people... Sorry, I'll give you a figure on that. Uh, by the year 2020, if we carry on, it'll be 22 million people diagnosed with cancer. That's projected figures, 22 million. Wow. That's just cancer. That's without all the rest of the stuff. Yeah, that's just cancer the too, list, exactly. You know, our list is so long now, it takes 10 minutes to roll it off, doesn't it? So anyway, back to this educating it's, thing, right? Yeah, so we don't go too far for that. I personally, yeah. I've been doing it for quite a long. I actually enjoy it. I really do like going out to the shows and telling people. I actually find it a really quite a nice lifestyle. Um, how does Landon cope with it? Does he, is, he, is he okay with it? Yeah, Landon is very healthy now, as everybody sees from our posts and stuff. But I think that people think he's 100% and he's not. He's at like about 90-something percent. Yeah. He still has a lot of damage done to his body. So he still has some occasional nausea and vomiting, yeah. things like that. But he is very healthy. He has never once, you know, gotten sick or anything on our trips. And he actually loves it. He loves getting to interact with people. Um, I'm sure you guys have, have seen him a couple times now. He's yeah. really spreading his uh, his independent wings. As yep. far as I want to tell you guys that chemo makes me sick and cannabis makes me better. Yep. And yep. just if you guys could see him at an event, the first time you uh, attend an event with us, you will see that child is up, down, left, right, all up in everybody's <laughs> booth, making <laughs> friends, introducing himself. Yep. You know, he abs it's so obvious that he absolutely <laughs> loves it. And I'm fortunate yeah. enough that I have, um, you know, Tom, who's our director of operations, he travels with me. And he's yeah. also um, now going to be Landon's caregiver for um, the state of Colorado has allotted Landon six hours a day of nursing. And oh. so Tom is taking the classes to be able to be Landon's caregiver. Um, so Landon is always well taken care of. Everybody spoils the crap out of him. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, and people are excited to see him. And a picture is worth a thousand words. But when you see that child in front of you, there's no denying it. Yeah. You well, that's cannot what I look at Landon and say that oh, he's oh, not healed. I, I'm lucky. I've known you for a while now, and I've seen the bad videos, and I've seen the good videos, and I've actually spoken to Landon on now, you know, when he told me about the, 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 the chemo had finished and the cancer, the, the cannabis was curing him, which was absolutely amazing, that sound bite. Oh, I love it. I'll play it to myself sometimes at night. <laughs> Just to hear his little voice say that. It's so fantastic. But yeah, it's happening, isn't it? And it, what a lovely environment for a little young man to be brought up in. Because I've always found a lot of these shows very informative. I've found the people there with a lot of heart. They've always got a bit more time than, say, if you was going to car sales or arm sales or whatever, ever, you know. Normally speaking, these cannabis functions are always very, very good to attend. You know? We've got some good people there. I'm glad he's enjoying it because he seems to be taking Well, you know, that's the thing, guys, is if we don't do it, who's going yeah. to? If we yeah. don't stand up for our children, if we don't advocate and spread our children's stories, who's yeah. going to do it? Who's going to do it? The and do it. I don't want any other child to go through what Landon's gone through. And there's so many. I mean, I cannot oh. believe that statistic you just told me. That blew oh. my mind, honestly. And I know how many a day and how oh. many a month. But, like, oh, my gosh, by oh. that year. I mean, and that's the good thing, guys. It's just going to get to the point where there will not be a single human being left yeah. in the United States or, you know, in many yeah. other countries 
that yeah. they don't know somebody that has cancer. That's where Except it's going to be at. Lot that are all going to be on the cannabis cure. It's going to be almost like a division of the species. There'll be those that exactly. are all cannabinoid efficient and working and, and the ones operating that are deficient. and most probably automatically have moved to a much more organic lifestyle in one stage or another. Yeah? And then there's going to be this other lot that are running around that are totally cannabinoid deficient. They're going to be full of tumours, full of sickness, full of doubt, full of worry, full of very, very, you know, drugs, real drugs. You know, we talk about the drug addict on the street. But that's what they're going to be. You know, the option that they take is actually of better quality and higher quality than you can most probably buy on the streets at the moment. But it's the same stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, well, I'm, and imagine <laughs> all of these children that are on Ritalin and Adderall yeah. and that's synthetic methamphetamine. Yeah. You know, yeah. what's going to happen when they grow up? And, you know, you know, my story is, you know, completely different from this, but I was actually one of those children. I was put on heavy pharmaceuticals at a very young age. Um, and it really messed with my life. And I really think that that's what led to, that's what led to a lot of my issues with prescription pills and with, um, having just, you know, I couldn't handle life because I was always on some kind of medication as a child that when I got old enough and I, I was thinking, well, wait a minute, you want me to be on this how long? The rest of yeah. my life? I have yeah. to? And I said, no more. And then reality really hit me in the face. Emotions. I mean, yeah. these pharmaceuticals are killing our kids' emotions. So, yeah. you know, life stresses, you know, your boyfriend, you know, saying something or disappointing you yeah. or your parents disappointing you. When yeah. you're on pharmaceuticals, you're like, meh, who cares? You know, like, oh, well. When you have to rip that away from that child, these kids are not going to know what to do. And I just have this terrible feeling that it's going to be like a zombie outbreak of people that were on synthetic methamphetamines and all these pharmaceuticals their whole life, and then, bam, we just take it away. Well, it's because they've made films about what happens to people on heavy drugs, and that's what's going to happen to them. Those films that they've been showing for the last 20, 30 years are people on very hard narcotic drugs turning, you know, you've seen these methamphetamines, how they've changed people around in six months or a year, or what, you know, a normal person that ends up on heroin, how their life just sort of spirals out of control. That's what's going to happen. It's not going to be any yeah. different. Because and then we're all going to wonder why. And That's what's going to be worse, guys, is we're going to wonder why these kids are like, well, I don't know why you just can't stay off of street drugs. I don't know why you're always looking for a high. I don't know why you're always looking for an escape from reality yeah. when they don't realize that they created it. And that's, they you know, why it. I'm spreading the education because 46 children a day diagnosed with cancer. My son at two years old was freely giving stand-in prescriptions for Oxycontin, morphine, Ativan, and a lot of other narcotics. And they were just increase it, increase it, increase it. I mean, they were yeah. so increased happy that, you know, you guys know the story, Landon was dying. And yeah, if dying. we can just tell parents, hey, there's a better way than narcotics, that in itself would help these kids fight cancer. Just by being yeah. off of all those drugs and by introducing yeah. cannabis, let's use it in combination with chemotherapy like Brave Michaela did. She's about to finish her uh, treatment. You know, wow. she'll get her port taken out, have her last chemotherapy ever. And wow. she has really shown the world that wow. why, why are these kids on all these drugs and why are they so sick when she has been, you know, very healthy throughout her uh, cancer treatment when she was getting the exact same chemotherapies that were almost killing Landon. So it really makes me wonder if Landon would have had an, an activated cannabinoid system in the beginning, if yeah. he had never been put on so many narcotics and pharmaceuticals in conjunction with chemotherapy, how would his life have been different? Why was I not afforded the information before? I had to wait till he was dying. That's what I want to get away from. That's why I'm making 2014 really the year that I'm going to just spend my time educating because I don't want anyone else to have to go through this. I mean, no, it ruins right, our it? lives. It's not right. It's not right, especially when it's a plant that you have already admitted live on air. You grew in your garden, bit of land, and that lovely chef came down and actually turned it into medicine. It was still medicine. How can exactly. Be, From how can seed to on land, it's Yeah. 
There's no real control. And, it's you know, you. honestly, guys, it, get, it comes down to, you know, there was a point in time when we were responsible for our own health. And if we did yeah. get sick, we called, you know, the the doctor. He made a home visit. It was right. not, you know, anything that's wrong with you. You come in and you get a pill. I mean, I, I should honestly make a YouTube series about this and just go into different doctors and hospitals <laughs> and just say, hey, this is wrong with me and see how much crap I can get. Because I guarantee you people would be blown well, away, weird. guys. Well, yeah. Weird. Exactly, oh but God, but if I want to get a medical marijuana card, right. I've got to have this and I've got to have that. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. And so if we can just, you know, all put all of our energies into really educating and everywhere you're turning and going, you're wearing a, you know, an awareness shirt and cannabis cures cancer or Crohn's or whatever it is, people will ask you and you will be able to spread that information. And then they'll, you know, we're at 90%. Why aren't we at 100 you know, every time there's a poll, it should be 100%. Everybody wants it. There's not one person that does it because we need to educate these people in the style of learning that they can learn what cannabis is. Because what, you know, worked for me and my mom is not going to work for everybody. I mean, if I handed somebody a stack of clinical research, they'd be like, uh, what is this? <laughs> if I bring my child to them and I bring other yeah. children to them that yeah. have completely different diseases, completely different family dynamics and show them we all had to go through trials, tribulations and pure hell to put our child on a plant, something that you just said it. I grew it in my garden and there's a chef upstairs right now making chocolate gelato. Oh, from your academy. I mean, thought, can you oh, imagine, guys? So could you imagine if everybody was doing this? You know, and you guys see it at day in and day out. We're all fundraising to be able to pay for this oil. We're all fundraising to be able to pay for the move and to pay for our children's medical expenses. So I'm thinking, well, if I can just invite a handful of moms over and show them, hey, one day I'm going to show you about growing and, and transplanting. The next day I'm going to show you about harvesting. The next day we'll teach you how to infuse butter. And the next day, what's your kid's favorite treat? And we'll make it. And that's it. Nutrition I mean, can you imagine, guys? I mean, I'm really trying to set off like a, a cannabis revolution here <laughs> by simply giving the power <laughs> to the people, giving the education <laughs> to the people. Join the club. There's plenty of us now. Where's the joy of it? We're not alone. We're not mad. We know what we're talking about, and it works. So them that don't know, you better hurry up because you're going to miss the boat otherwise. <laughs> hey, it's more of us beginning to know than them that don't know. And them that don't know, you're just acting stupid. You're standing on old information that don't work. You know it don't work. We know it don't work. The people that sell it to you know it don't work. We know what works. It's called cannabis. It's simple. Always was, always will be. It's not rocket science. Simple. So who should we give a big shout out? Your mum, because she really impressed me. Hello. Oh, well, thank yeah. you. She, you know, my, I love my mom, and she blessed her heart. She has such a, a an incredible story on her own. She was actually um, born and raised in a drug house and very abusive, and and was taken and and placed with you know who I know as my grandparents today. My mother was the kind of person that if you were smoking a joint, you might as well be shooting out black tar heroin. I mean, yeah. she, it was one and the same to her. It was a drug. It ruined her, her life. It ruined her yeah. family's life, yeah. you know. And so if, if she can open her mind to it, yeah. then anybody can. You know, and my thing is, is why, why do we want people to suffer? I myself have been having a ton of issues, um, health issues, and everybody's like, Sierra, you have it growing in, you know, your garden. Just start yes. juicing. Start doing this. And yes. I'm like, well, yes. I know I have it at my fingertips, but I'm still <laughs> leery because of, you know, people, yeah. the judgment the and, issues, and everything judgment. else. It's certainly not to Exactly. Do because if you nope. say that, Bob, so, yeah, that's what that. I tell everybody, you know, is there's everyone thinks that you have to smoke weed in order to ingest cannabis. There is so many different ways. There's topicals, there's skin patches, there's, you know, my, ice cream, cheesecake, meatloaf. I mean, what do you guys like to eat? Anything you can think of, I can make it for you now organically and infused. You can get your daily cannabinoid intake through your favorite food. I mean, you can do it in a capsule, just like a daily vitamin. Sarah, you can juice it raw. Said it there. Your daily intake of cannabinoids, you must make sure that you 
walk your talk and practice what you would preach. And you need your daily intake of cannabinoids as much as I do. I know. As, do, as much as your mum do, as much as every animal on the planet does. <laughs> Um, I know. Of all you know honestly, that, that's of all something I'm going to work on too, Patrick. All this attitude, you, know, gonna... you most probably feel I... I can't. I can't be seen to be the stoned mother, but you're not the stoned mother. You're a very sensible mother who saved your child's life. Well, and you know, Steve, you've talked to a lot of these moms, you know, oh. and you've heard their stories, and oh. you've heard the just the crazy, ludicrous yeah. things that they've gone through. Yeah. How many of those moms do you think are overstressed? They all are overspent. All of them. They're spending too much time caregiving and not you, enough time you, on themselves. If I was a doctor, you are actually most probably in this post-traumatic stress. You have been through one of the most stress. Uh, you know, they put it down to war. War is only one thing. Car crashes, accidents, person. Watching your child die must be, you asked any vet. I bet any, even any vet that's seen the worst thing that war has to offer would be able to empathise with you having to watch your child go through what he went through and not be able to do anything. That's post-traumatic stress. Say goodnight, Gracie. Hey, goodnight, Gracie. <laughs> Big shout-out going to Headworks Charity UK and the Brighton One, the United Lions patients. Go on, show One quick shout-out. 